Welcome to When We Belong podcast, episode one, intro into belonging. Join us as we begin to discuss what belonging means to us as we implement belonging into Washington state government. What's up, everyone? I am Trayana Holiday, the Communications Director here at Washington State's Office of Equity. We are joining you today to bring to you a topic that many of you may heard about in terms of belonging. But what does it actually mean? Well, we have six amazing individuals, including myself, who will be sharing our perspectives on belonging, what it means to us. But we want to really preface this with some ideas of how we want you to be able to approach the information and the perspectives you're going to be hearing from all of us before we actually dive into the topic. So we have a few don't do that statements that we want to share with you that really uh, will ground you in terms of being open and uh, understanding the information and perspectives we are sharing are coming from our personal personal perspectives, our personal lived experience, and it may not incorporate everything. So I'm going to go ahead and start and let you know that sometimes when people show up as their authentic self, it tends to make people wonder what's up with them or want to pick at what's wrong with them and what they're sharing. And I'm encouraging you to don't do that. Don't do that as you listen to us. Be authentic in our sharing about what belonging means to us and how we see belonging coming through state government in our perspective roles. So I want to encourage you to be open. Do that. Be open as you listen to all of these amazing folks' perspective on what belonging is. Thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead and pass it to Marisa. Thanks for that intro, Trey. My name is Marissa Joy Van Hoosier. I do use she, her pronouns, and I have the privilege of being the Chief Equity and Operations Officer for the Department of Commerce. Um, I know coming into these spaces, I come with, with a whole lot of complicated feelings, perspectives, some that are contradictory with each other, and having these conversations be oversimplified or prescribed to a single statement that I've said out of context can be really damaging. So I'd encourage you, uh, don't do that. Um, this is way too complicated. Uh, we've got way too many intersections. And um, what I would encourage people to do is stay curious and stay open. Do that. Um, I'll send it over to Megan Matthews. Thanks, Marissa. Megan Matthews here. My pronouns are she and her. And I'm the acting director for Washington State's Office of Equity. So my uh, contribution is don't focus on my tone and the directness of my speech. Don't use that as a uh, way to dismiss what's on my heart and what's I'm sharing. Don't, don't, don't do that. Instead, listen to understand what I'm saying. I'm gonna pass to Michaela. Thanks, Megan. Um, so hi everyone, Michaela Dolman. Uh, I use she, her, and they, them pronouns, and I lead the state HR division within OFM State HR. And as a first generation biracial American, I am still trying to figure out what it means to show up in this space, um, both with my white side and my brown side and, and who I am uh, when everybody wants me to be a whole of something where I feel like I'm always a half. Um, so if you feel yourself projecting your own experiences onto mine, don't do that. Just know that we're all comprised of our many experiences and do your own work. And if you find yourself jumping to blame based on a comment I made, don't do that either. Just know that language is complex and that we are all learning together. And the conversations that we're going to be having are not about perfection, but it's about doing the work and making progress. So I hope that you can join us and I will pass it off to my Kia. Thank you. Thank you very much, Michaela. My name is Mike Adai, and I am the Director of Equity and Grants at Serve Washington, a sort of subdivision of OFM. And as we continue, as we go through these conversations and we are sharing our hearts, we're sharing our experiences, we're sharing, you know, um, education and knowledge and just the, the idea that we want to bring people alongside and, and walk this walk together. 
if you find yourself listening and bristling with the idea of unfairness or there's a lack of representation and it's leading you to start a game of oppression Olympics, don't do that. Okay, this is not the space for that. Instead, consider these conversations as an invitation to take a closer look at your immediate environment and see how and where the principles of what we're, he of what we're saying applies to what's going on with you or the people around you. This is not a space to dissect words. And I will this. Oh, I will pass it over to Ashley. Thank you for that. My name is Ashley Bell. I'm the Equity and Social Justice Manager for a division in the Department of Health, Health Systems Quality Assurance. And I use the pronouns she and they. And sometimes the conversations we have in this space are really difficult and they can cause some discomfort. And I always used to say, through um, being uncomfortable comes growth. And we want to grow here. And so if you find yourself feeling uncomfortable and you want to tune us out, don't do that. Lean into the discomfort. Learn something. That's what you want to do. And with that, I'll pass it back to Trey. Wow, we just gave y'all a bunch of opportunities to learn and grow based on what we have experienced as we approach these kind of difficult conversations sometimes. So I encourage you all to really take on what everyone has shared, do the things that they suggested you do, and don't do the things that we told you explicitly not to do. Uh, thanks for listening to our disclaimer. With that, I want to go ahead and pass it on over to Megan Matthews. Thank you, Trey. Megan Matthews here. Um, so let me give you a little bit of background on why we are all gathered here in this space. The Office of Equity, um, our mandate, we are directed um, by the legislature, the state legislature, to support state agencies in uh, systems change so that we no longer function as a government of oppression. Um, but rather, we focus in a pro-equity, anti-racism uh, uh, approach towards belonging. And sometimes when we think about belonging, you know, in theory, it sounds good. We all want to belong. But what does that mean? And we had, which I'm sure will um, show, part of um, John Powell's uh, example on the difference between inclusion and belonging. So I'll let his works, his word, words uh, illustrate the example itself. Um, uh, so we wanted to bring this space and create this space to discuss belonging. What does it mean for state employees to create spaces where everyone belongs? Because I believe it's on state employees to uh, change. Community doesn't need to change. Uh, Nobody else in Washington, Washington state needs to change, but we have so much power as state employees um, that we need to step into to be the change and, and that people need. We're public servants. We need to, to be the change that people deserve and have a right to. Everyone has value, not because of what they do, not because of how much money they make, not because of how much wealth they generate, not and specifically not because of how they present in the world. Everyone has value because they exist. You have value because you're here. And so how do we create the space in Washington where everyone belongs? Um, in theory, it sounds good, but we don't necessarily know what that means to, to do it. How, how are we change makers in our own work, in our own sphere of control? What can we do to advance belonging for everyone? And so I brought some friends, some of my friends together to have these conversations. And I'm really excited to learn from them what, what they feel um, are actions that they can take and others can take to advance belonging in Washington state and to really make this real for all of you. So I'm hoping you can come and get some tips, uh, some ideas, generate some uh, creativity in your brain to think about the everyday actions you take so that we can make belonging real for all Washingtonians. And with that, I will pass to Ashley Bell. So Ashley, the question is, what does belonging mean for you? And what are you hoping to 
share with others with this series. Thank you for that. You know, belonging is such a misunderstood um, topic. A lot of people say, well, if you fit in, then you belong. But that says that me as a person has to fit what you decide I need to look like, not how I come to work. So when I belong um, in my life, in my house, um, among friends, when, when I come to a place, I can bring my true self to there. And no one questions and says, well, uh-uh-uh, you can't do that. This is what we do. Everyone needs to feel wanted. We need to feel needed. And in that space, you know, when I feel like I belong, I'm wanted, I'm needed. I am a part of this world, a part of this culture. I am being. And um, that's the thing about it is recognizing that we all have this human part of us that makes us unique and it's okay to be me and so that's what I really think of you know what what belonging really is and then to get out of this really have people on that same pathway so that in our own position we then understand how to create a place of belonging and then everything becomes easier and easier subjective. Um, so with that, I'll pass it to um, um, Michaela. Thanks, Ashley. Um, I'll just be real. I'm still trying to figure this out. I know it when I feel it, <laughs> but I, I don't know how to describe it yet. And I think that's kind of the idea of the pro-equity anti-racism is, is we're trying to build what this needs to look like because we haven't had it before. We haven't had it at full scale before. Um, but you know, knowing my role, owning my role as state HR, like HR is the perpetuator of professionalism and policies around only one way to act and to speak and to do that has created the culture where so many of us don't feel like we belong. And so it's really trying to explore, um, you know, what can that look like going forward? I know for me, I spend so much of my time filtering through what do I need to say to make sure it fits in with this audience? How do I need to dress to make sure that I'll be accepted as a professional woman? What do I need to, how do I need to do my hair depending on what, what I'm, uh, where I'm showing up that day? And it's exhausting. And so to me, belonging just feels like maybe the lack of effort that I can just show up and not have to put in all that additional effort every day to try and figure out how do I contort myself to fit in with this group that might change to the next group that might change to the next group, but it doesn't ever consider what I want. And so um, I want to figure that out. And I'm so excited that we get to be here to do that together. Um, and with that, I'm going to pass it off to Trey. I appreciate uh, what everybody has shared thus far. And, and I'll say that, you know, this is the beginning uh, for us of this discussion. It will continue. And so we hope that you all really tune in uh, and learn as we are going to be learning and sharing together. I'll say this, you know, uh, I come from a community perspective and oftentimes we talk about systems of oppression and we talk about the systems and the systems at play that have, you know, inherently brought global majority communities down and tried to keep the knee on our neck. And we say so many different things in community about systems, but people are the upholders of systems. And particularly as state employees, you have an opportunity to look at what you do in your role and identify the ways that you're upholding systems of oppression. When you begin to understand what you do every single day that may uphold these systems, when you then begin to change your moves so that you're not upholding those same systems, we will create a greater understanding and sense of belonging. And that for me is really important in terms of state employees understanding that it's on us. We have the ability. We now have a pathway because it is, it is 
now mandated, right? It's like the Office of Equity exists to open up these opportunities for pro-equity and anti-racism approaches to be embedded in how you do business. But this also means uh, um, really inevitably that as you begin to look at what is it that I do in my role that's doing that? How can I change certain things? I really encourage you to be emboldened in your approaches to not be status quo employees. Um, and for me, uh, when everyone starts to feel that they have the power to do that, that they can take something that maybe it's a system or a procedure or a process or a rule that has really been uh, restrictive, that has really caused harm, or that has really not allowed you to do your work to its maximum capacity to really serve Washingtonians, which is inevitably what we're all here to do as state employees. We can't forget that. Um, but we're also Washingtonians ourselves. So what does it look like for us to serve ourselves? That's the question I really want y'all to be asking yourselves. And as we dive into this topic deeper, I think every time you think about um, maybe 10 years ago, you knew that there was some type of system that really didn't work so well, but you're like, these are the rules. I got to do it. This is the way it's always been done. I'm I'm saying, no, nah, take it to your supervisor. Do it the correct way. Take it to your peer team. Look at how you can change that rule or change that procedure so that it's actually serving Washingtonians at a greater capacity. We all have the ability to make sure that the people we serve feel as though they belong. That starts with us. It's more than compassion or opening your heart in a loving way. It's actually making the changes and taking bold action and bold steps to say, I get to be a part of steering Washington state government to be a belonging state because of some of the things I'm doing today, right now, right now. That's the beauty of it, is that we're going to be defining what this looks like over time together through our actions. And it's also through our actions that Washingtonians will feel as though they belong, that they'll walk into a state agency or a state government office and understand that that person that they're meeting at that counter is there to serve them in the greatest way, is there to meet them where they are is not there to impute on them all of the rules that they just can't help them in that moment, but that they actually find the pathway to help that Washingtonian as soon as they come through the door. That's something that's on us, y'all. And so I'm excited to, to understand and to begin to unfold this beautiful flower of belonging at the state level, starting with exactly what you do in your role and how you can contribute to us all feeling as though we belong because we're serving ourselves while we serve Washingtonians. With that, I'll go ahead and pass it to Mikea. Thank you, thank you for that, Triana. My goodness, you you said a word right there. <laughs> you said a word. <laughs> My goodness, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And um, everything that was just said, there, there was so much and it was so rich. And thinking about that and thinking about um, how we apply belonging. And as Makayla said, as we're still learning what that means for us individually, and then again, what it means for our agencies, for our commissions, for our state boards, for, you know, at, for whatever service it is that we are giving to Washingtonians. And um, I, I feel a big part of that is is celebrating and not tolerating. And, and I don't always mean throwing a party or giving a big award or anything by in celebration, but when we are re-examining our policies, our practices, um, looking at our services, and we're making these changes, making sure that the changes we're making are one, not check the box changes, but changes that are appropriately situating identities and pro appropriately applying needs and making sure that we're looking at even what we consider to be the small things. Maybe there's a naming conventions, understanding where some of the labels and names that we use are inclusive, but they're also promoting erasure of different things. And so being sure that we're leaning into that and listening to what the people are telling us 
and taking that so that people are doing more than just surviving in these spaces. They're they're doing more than just you know just walking along and plodding along like like the Bergens. I have a little one, so we watch trolls all the time, and so it's just surviving. Like we're just getting to that next step. But people are holistically thriving, making sure that we're promoting that and pushing that, and showing people again that they matter. And, and not just saying that they matter, but showing them. These are these are action words. And so it's as as Trayana was saying, it's in what we do and what we are what we are exemplifying as state employees. And I will pass this over to. Well, I believe I might have been the last one. Was that the last one? No. Mar Marissa. Marissa. Okay, I thought Marissa went first. My bad. So I will pass this right on over to Marissa. Thanks for that. Um, so a, a lot of my colleagues spoke about belonging in um, ways that I'm still trying to learn how to speak on it in these individual, how does it, what does, does it really mean to me? Um, and I, I recognize too that um, we, when we show up at work, it can mean something very different in in one on one interactions with folks, whether or not I, I feel like this person gets me or not. Um, but I also know that one of the one of the best types of conversations I like to have with folks is when we treat our organizations almost like individuals and we ask ourselves what is it about this organization, um, this agency that I work in that can um, create a sense of belonging in how it shows up with us as individuals as well? And I know that's uh, that's uh, a very vague and sort of weird way to talk about um, the sense of systems and the sense of agency. Um, but I think it's a really important one when we talk about belonging because there, there are all these defaults that are already there. Um, and for us to be curious about what those defaults are um, and to what extent they create a sense of belonging for certain groups of people is part of what we have to be curious about. So when you hear me say, lean in, be curious, um, I I really mean it. I feel like that curiosity, that trait about what is it that um, that perpetuates belonging or doesn't it doesn't um, emphasize and help belonging is something that we all need to be doing. Are there are there things in place in our organizations? Is there uh, is there a high desire to have individualism, sense of urgency? Do you have these? Um, reports that you must write and you can't just talk through and have conversations with people? Are there um, are there meeting spaces that you walk into where you know that you can't rock the boat? There's a, there's a right to comfort that exists within the system. Um, do you have conversations where uh, there's there's really only one right answer and everybody needs to drive towards that one right answer? Um, those are the types of things that we need to be curious about um, if we really want to effectuate belonging for folks. We have to be very curious about what is the default, what is the current state that we are um, that we are operating in so that we can then widen that scope and and not be so rigid in our thinking, in our feeling, in our solutions for ourselves and for our customers that we serve. Um, so I I ask folks within, within our teams um, at Commerce uh, to really think about who is left in the margins. And I mean that from a service orientation and I mean that from a team orientation as well. Who's left in the margins and how can you be brave about talking about who that is and why that may be um, so that there's not a sense of blame, but a sense of curiosity and understanding what we can be doing better and for who. Um, and to me, that's where belonging in our systems work um, is, is really important and can go a long ways for ourselves and for for those that we serve. Um, so Megan, I'm just gonna take a point of privilege here and saying, 
thank you for uh, creating enough of a belonging space here where we can have some of these messy conversations where we're not reading off of the script on what it means to us, but really talking from the heart about what it means. And even just being able to do that in a state space where things should be perfect and lined out um, and timed. I'm sure I've gone over whatever time expectation folks have of me today. Um, and being able to have these real conversations, I think, is is part of the ingredients that that make up uh, belonging for us here. So thank you to you and to the rest of the panel in being brave enough to lean in, be curious, and and talk about these things that can be very messy. Thanks to all of you for sharing what was on your heart, for um, accepting, you know, the request to help me introduce this topic to our state colleagues, um, to give hope to our community members that we will get it together. We will get this together, okay? Um, and and that we are committed to shifting Washington state government and how we operate. Um, Cause you're right, Trey, the system is made up of people and we cannot forget that. Um, it's easier to hear talk about systems because then we don't feel blame, but we are all part of the system. No matter, once you get into state government, um, you have chosen to be part of the system. We talk about quote unquote, the man, we're all part of that. And every decision and every action you make and take either perpetuate depression or advances equity, justice, and belonging. There are, is no middle. So um, I think when we think about the, the intentionality that we need to have in our actions and you know what we are doing, we have to make a decision. What reality, what future do we want to help shape and create um, or do we want to perpetuate? So uh, Trey, I will pass it to you to wrap up our conversation. And we all look forward to share, having this uh, conversation and discussion with you um, our thoughts and learning together in the future in the next session. Absolutely. Well, it's so great to hear what everyone has to share in terms of uh, how we're approaching belonging. You heard a wide range of perspectives here, all based on our lived experience, because we worked to curate our familiarity with each other so that we could bring our authentic selves to this discussion. And already, you know, the goal is for you all to be growing and learning with us. And as you are learning and applying it, trust and believe that we're going to be making the change that we want to see. So I welcome you. We all welcome you to continue to join us as these discussions come up. We'll be sure you get them in your inbox. We want y'all to be able to participate with us and really learn and grow with us as we anchor ourselves in an understanding and a commitment to bringing belonging to all Washingtonians. Thanks for listening.